You might not believe me, but this is not the mountains. At least not the ones you're familiar with. This is the Flint, and we have a story you need to hear. A story of swamps and cypress, hills and pines, city and country. And along its banks, tens of thousands of acres. Beautiful land for viewing, hunting, living, and connecting. Every mile of water reveals something new. 350 miles of life-giving water for farms, cities, families. A rich culture, a world-class fishery, so much space, from the dancing shoals south of Atlanta to the sweeping vistas below Albany. Solitude. Over one million people, their river, their story to tell of a Georgia treasure. We need you to help tell that story, to become part of it. If you think about the prehistory, the paleo history of the Flint, the migrants from Asia, they were hunter-gatherers. And there were still very large animals here. Protein was available in large packages. And the ecosystem changed. There was a climatic change. And those large animals were wiped out. And so protein was available in smaller packages. It's the animals we're familiar with today. Rabbits, deer, squirrels, and then the rivers became important. And catching fish um, became a cultural thing, a protein thing, and that culture grew up around the rivers in the southeast. Eventually, they learned agricultural techniques and built up really strong civilizations. So when the original European settlers got here, they called these people the creeks because they lived along the creeks and the rivers. And then for those first Europeans, for those settlers, the rivers were important for the same reasons as, a, as sources of protein and to grow crops along, and also for transportation, a major transportation system. And we can still see some evidence of, of some of these uses uh, historically that are in the basin now. Uh, this includes fish weirs, which are V-shaped rock structures that Native Americans built to uh, harvest fish. And it also includes stretches of the, the river bottom below um, Albany and Newton, where in the 1800s, the Army Corps of Engineers blasted rock out in order to allow passage of steamboats carrying uh, people and freight. To really understand why the Flint River is so special, it's better to think about it as a system with parts that are interconnected and that affect each other as they change. And to illustrate that, if you uh, start where the river first forms in an area called the Headwaters, uh, that's in the southern part of Metro Atlanta near Hartsfield Jackson Airport. In that area, small streams run together to form the river. It's very small at that time. And then as it flows through that south metro area and further south into more rural areas around cities like Thomaston and Montezuma and Oglethorpe, more streams um, come in um, and make it a larger river. Those streams are called tributaries, and as you go further south, you get the water from all those tributaries adding up. The river then um, runs into uh, and forms uh, Lake Blackshear outside Cordill, and then after it uh, flows through the dam that creates that lake, it moves into a um, hard lime limestone terrain. And in that terrain, uh, the river and the groundwater, the water under the surface of the land, um, are in direct connection uh, because of that limestone. Um, it, that limestone forms a groundwater body called the Florida Aquifer that underlies much of southwest Georgia. But then there's also the land. Um, and all of the land that runs into those streams and rivers and helps feed that groundwater, all of the activities on that land can affect 
um, the uh, surface water and the groundwater, both the amount of that water and the quality of that water, the pollution that it carries. So when we talk about the Flint River Basin, that all um, is part of what we're talking about, the streams, the rivers, the springs, the groundwater, and the land. Almost every river and creek on the planet is associated with some sort of aquifer or another. The water gets in little cracks in the rock with the rainfall and with the small creeks and it shows up in small springs and seeps um, coming out of the rock. And in a limestone aquifer, it's like Swiss cheese. And so in Albany, Georgia, you have limestone and then several different sand aquifers that are, that are underneath you going many hundred feet down. And that limestone aquifer, which is an old seabed, it's really interconnected with the river. And so the Flint winds up flowing into a lot of places that we can't see with our eyes and that you don't necessarily know it's Flint water when it, when it gets there. And it's an incredibly important resource for the agricultural economy. It is the, the fountain of ag. So when I think about uses of the water resources in the basin, I think about the people who value those uses. Um, that includes a water utility manager in the South Metro Atlanta area who uh, is a, the river's important to him because of the uh, water supply it provides for the homes and the businesses in his community and for the way it helps process the treated wastewater that comes from those homes and businesses. I think about uh, current and former Boy Scouts I've met whose connection to the river happened at a camp outside of Molina. I think about uh, the anglers I've talked to for whom fishing for shoal bass is one of their great joys. And they're very reluctant about sharing their best fishing spots, but they're really happy to tell you their stories about the fish they caught. I think about the people that I see sitting uh, in the parks along the river in Albany and just enjoying that space and the presence of the river. I think about others who enjoy boating on the lakes or the rivers uh, for fellowship with their family and friends. And then I think about the many people I, I've met who love farming the land. They love that and part of what they love is the water that's available in the basin and how it makes the land productive. All of these uses uh, fuel the economy and jobs in the river basin. And they also contribute to the day-to-day -day quality of life uh, that folks enjoy so much in the Flint River Basin. There are a lot of fish in the Flint. There are over 60 species of fish, but we're only interested in about 10 or 12 of those species in terms of what we can catch and have fun with or eat or what have you. But they're all important. And so we need to slow down a little bit and think about how all of the fish, all of the amphibians, all of the reptiles, all of the insects, all of the micro critters that we can't see, as well as all of the, the macro plants, the, the plants we can see, how they're all important. And it's this diversity that makes it such a strong biological engine and so attractive um, as, a, as a cultural icon and as just part of who we are.